I see that I am attempting to plug a huge gap with whatever small influence I have, that gap of general knowledge about art from the Arab world. I am Sultan Saud al-Qasmi, I am a collector and the founder of the Barjil Art Foundation. In the early 2000s, I was visiting a lot of exhibitions with my late father and my mom, and I uh, got to meet a lot of artists, and I got to meet a lot of individuals who, even looking back at them now, brings a smile to my face because I didn't realize how important these individuals were. Um, I stumbled upon an exhibition in around 2002 or so of a Palestinian artist called Ismail Shamout and his wife Tamam Al Akhal. And um, I started getting intrigued by art from the region. The following year, I went to an exhibition of an Emirati artist called Abdul Qadr al Rais, and I got to meet him. And I think meeting him encouraged me to buy work. And that was, I think, this, the first spark. A few years later, there was the introduction of uh, social media through BlackBerry. There was something called the BlackBerry Messenger, BBM. And I used to take photographs of uh, exhibitions I was at or works that I bought and send it to some of my friends. And they would ask me, where can we see this? And that, tho that thought started brewing in my mind, saying, well, there is no space to show these works. And, and so that is the uh, initial idea of establishing uh, uh, Barjil Art Foundation. And I started writing letters to the government, who in 2009 agreed to give me a space. The Barjil Art Foundation is an organization whose purpose is to collect, preserve and promote uh, art from the Arab world. Uh, the foundation was started in 2010 and it has since mounted 30 exhibitions, half of which were in the UAE and the other half were outside the UAE. Works from the Barjil Art Foundation collection have uh, been shown at the Whitechapel Gallery over a period of a year and a half. We've also shown at the Aga Khan Museum in Toronto, as well as the Arab World Institute in Paris, a number of university museums in the US, and throughout the Middle East, including Tehran, Iran, Amman, Jordan, and Alexandria, Egypt. I chose to take this collection to places, uh, not only in the region, but also internationally, where the narrative about the region has been dominated by negative news. And it's important to reach out to the other. It's important to reach out to ourselves and each other uh, in order to expand the narrative, in order to introduce different facets, in order to showcase the multitude of cultures of the region. When I took the decision to establish Barjil, I, uh, I immediately thought to myself that I do not want to call this the Sultan Saud Al Qasmi art collection. I try to disassociate myself from the very beginning and give the collection a name and an identity and even almost a personality of its own. I'm happy to say that a few years later, there are people who know the, the, the collection separately from me. However, I do recognize that having this collection gives, uh, gives me a lot of influence and a, a, a great deal of responsibility. Um, I feel that if I don't keep reminding myself that this is a public service that I'm trying to do, that this collection is, is not mine, but I am acting as a guardian of this collection, that this collection will hopefully outlive me for not only generations, but centuries ahead. Uh, I think this allows me to deflate my, uh, my ego. And one of the first things I did when uh, I established the, the, uh, the, the collection or the foundation was to write a will. And I immediately wrote that uh, should anything happen to me, that this entire collection will go to a museum. I want to, uh, I want to uh, assure everybody that I am not looking for financial gain, and I'm looking for this collection to be available for the public for as, as long as possible. So after almost a decade of collecting, displaying, showcasing, touring, um, I felt that I need some time for myself uh, to uh, not only consolidate the collection, but also to consolidate my own thoughts. And that is the impetus behind an agreement we signed in January 2018 with the Sharjah Art Museum uh, that would see the collection, uh, or at least a significant part of the collection, hang for five years or more. 
The residency at Delvina Foundation offered me an opportunity to curate a number of programs that I have always wanted to curate. So for instance, uh, thanks to the team at the Delfina, we put together a symposium on uh, architecture that had 11 speakers and we had over 100 people uh, turn up for the event and um, people stayed till the end. It was four hours, I think, of, of talks and lectures. I also managed to interview a, uh, an important art collector, Saeb Eigner, who published a book eight years ago but never spoke about it in public. That, that was a rare opportunity. With regards to the private side of the Delfina uh, residency, uh, I think, first of all, it allowed me to interact with the staff, which I have found to be very uh, amiable, but also with the residents. I, uh, I, I became, I sort of formed friendships with two or three of the residents, and I got to meet all of them. The fact that they're all scholars and researchers um, I was asking them questions about why, you know, what are they doing and why is it important to have uh, works available? Uh, why do researchers want to access the storage facilities of these collections? What do they see? How are they trying to influence uh, public hangings? 2018 has been great so far. It started with the Delfina Foundation residency and now um, I'm looking forward to a uh, few months that I'll be spending in New Haven as part of the Yale um, Greenberg World Fellows Program. And um, I think this is also part of um, the process of my trying to find myself uh, in my 40th year on this planet. I want to feed my brain more. I want to spend time with people that I respect. I want to curate intellectual projects more. This is what causes me happiness, the sharing of knowledge, the sharing of culture, the sharing of art. And so I've taken a conscious decision that in my 40s I wanted to do more of this and spend less time on some of the negativities that I encountered in my 30s, most of which stemmed from some of the political situations in the Middle East. And I recognize that the region will, will always have its challenges. But I decided that you know, instead of being consumed by what is negative, I would try to highlight and uh, put a spotlight on what is positive in the region.